episode of Finnogric Machine, we are going to create a, a breaking a resistor for the VFD. And this is uh, for my lathe. Uh, I'm going to equip it with a VFD. Uh, well, and uh, to be able to stop it rapidly, you either need to break it mechanically, <coughs> which is uh, this late, I believe, doesn't have that option. So I need to break it with the motor. And uh, well, uh, for that uh, we need a, a breaking a resistor. And uh, because uh, when you run a mo motor with a VFD, it will, uh, <coughs> when you start breaking it, uh, it uh, will dump the uh, inertia of the components, the energy in the component somewhere. And uh, well, uh, normally you would use uh, friction, just uh, let it uh, slow down by itself. But when you are braking, you are really consuming this energy and uh, you should uh, dump it somewhere. Uh, well, uh, <coughs> normally these VFDs don't uh, uh, contain a braking resistor inside them. Uh, well, uh, there is also a thing called DC braking, but this is um, Oh, well, uh, not the same at all. Uh, you are using that when the spindle is in standstill. Uh, but, uh, and it's uh, really, uh, it can uh, really heat up your motor. Uh, that's uh, bad. So, well, uh, the correct value for this uh, braking resistor is, uh, well, uh, it depends on your uh, components, like the inertia, how much you have uh, rotating components there. And uh, then it depends on the uh, horsepower of your motor. And in this case, it, uh, the horsepower is somewhere around uh, 3 kilowatts. And uh, we need to uh, dump that energy somewhere. I did some calculations and the correct, uh, uh, the minimum value for this resistor is somewhere around uh, 30 ohms. And the maximum, uh, well, uh, uh, to have any effect is around uh, 100, uh, maybe 20 ohms. Uh, so that uh, that's not a very good option. I could use 100 uh, ohms resistor. I have one here. That's uh, 100 uh, ohms, 100 watts. <laughs> uh, well, uh, the power is uh, quite correct uh, because it's a temporary thing and uh, well, but this is too large. I need a little bit lower value, something like uh, 40 ohms maybe. Uh, so for this reason, we are going to make uh, a resistor today. I have some resistor wire uh, and I do uh, have an idea how to make this uh, resistor. So uh, let's uh, go into the workbench first and uh, do some measurements. Well, uh, this here uh, is uh, resistor, resistance wire, you can read on the label. <laughs> this one contains uh, uh, chromium, quite a lot of that, and uh, then aluminium. So this, uh, to solder this one, uh, it's uh, next to impossible. So the next uh, step is to go to the uh, real press actually and uh, start winding our resistors. First we make uh, just a sample and then we measure this sample and after that we know how to make the real ones. Well, <coughs> so this is the setup. Uh, it's uh, just, uh, well, uh, this is uh, some thread uh, M6 thread I have put here on the top uh, thing where I can start to wind it. Uh, the intention is to have the resistor wire on the threads here. So they will be evenly distributed. Uh, the, well, uh, anyway, uh, so this has to be driven slowly and uh, under no circumstances you should uh, be using glass. But this is a uh, very dangerous setup if you are doing that. So there, for this reason, I'm uh, like uh, you need to put some tension into this so that it forms into the threads. So therefore, I'm using this wooden stick uh, for tension. 
and then I have here under, well it's just an uh, uh, iron piece with a hole in it. And then I can lower this down into the hole, like this, and uh, lock the quill at the convenient place. So now it's supported somewhat on under, so I can really put some tension into that. So let's see uh, how it rotates. Now this is wrong direction. It should be rotated this way, so then I can uh, wind it down here. Okay, and then I have here this thing, which is uh, for the rope, like that. So. It's turning this way, so I'm putting it this way. Okay. And now this piece of wood, let's see if I roll it once. That should be enough. Let's see now. This is hard to start. <laughs> Wrong direction. <laughs> okay. The tension is suitable here. And now it should start this way. Okay, let's stop it, and now I need to make that I made it this long. <laughs> Hopefully that stays there, because now when I release this it will uh, actually spring out like, oh, not much, wow. So now we have here a nice sample. Oh yeah, we need to thread it out. <laughs> okay, that's not the problem. Like this. Yeah. Yep. There you are. Now we have a coil. Well, now uh, that we have this coil here, uh, we should measure it. Put it in ohm. Let's see now. Well, it depends. Uh, now it's 12, 13. Well, there is another way of measuring this kind of uh, resistances. Uh, you can also put uh, constant current into one. Uh, let's put one amp through that one. Exactly like one amp. I'm trimming it here. Now it's one amp. You can measure the voltage between this pin and uh, that pin. And now, uh, when we go to the volts mode, so it should be somewhere around, uh, well, let's see. Now we connect one amp here. <coughs> and the voltage here is uh, 12 volts. So it's quite exactly 12 volts. Uh, ohms, I mean. If this one was now like 12 ohms, so what we need Let's see what we are going to need. Uh, let's take a pencil. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, so we have, uh, we should have uh, air that should be uh, something like 40 ohms. Okay. So now if we are using this kind of elements, uh, this is uh, like uh, 12 ohms. So with uh, three of these, we are going to have uh, 36 ohms if we connect them, them like uh, these in series. So each is 12, 12, 12. And uh, when you connect the resistors in series, you just uh, sum them. And then you get this 36 ohms. Okay, but uh, there is a there is a thing power minimum 100 watts. 
So I would like to put uh, uh, more of these elements. Now if we uh, have uh, like, uh, if we have uh, changed the configuration a little bit, so we have uh, like six of them. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, and 12. And uh, 6 times 12 is 72 ohms. 72 ohms. And now, uh, 72 ohms. But if we connect here in parallel an other set of these, like this, and then uh, connect these in parallel like this, so in this case uh, we have two 72 ohm resistors, but since they are in parallel, it means that we have to divide in this case because they are equal. So it's 72 per 2 equals 36 ohms. So that's the configuration we are going to need, uh, do. It is now we are getting uh, some a lot more power four times for one. Uh, we need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12 of these. Yeah, I will now do 12, 11 more of these. So, uh, now that we have uh, made a few of uh, these, <laughs> uh, we need to uh, make these look like this. So, uh, well, it's just a bending job with uh, these round nose pliers, not round, uh, half moon. <laughs> and yeah, first straighten this thing. This thread is uh, actually it doesn't uh, tolerate a lot of bending. You you have to do it in one go, otherwise you will fail. And then I turn it like that first. I'll show you <coughs> if you can see that like that in the halfway. After that, I'll take. Uh, in the middle, about in the middle, and then turn it like that. There you are, first done, and then the other one end. Same thing, like that, and then halfway. This is not exact science, it's uh, just 
that uh, it's about in the middle. Okay, uh, after uh, quite uh, quite some bending, yeah. they are out there. This stuff, uh, this uh, resistor wire, uh, it's specific. Yeah, in you cannot solder it. It doesn't wet with normal solder. Uh, the alloy is just just uh, unsolderable. <laughs> So, uh, because uh, it contains aluminium, that makes it uh, really hard to solder. And uh, so, uh, there are ways to do this. The melting point is uh, for this is uh, over 1000 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's good. And, uh, well, uh, you could use uh, special solder, which I have. Uh, it's this, it's called alusol. Uh, this, uh, this is one way to do it. It looks like this, it's really... But this is uh, really hazardous, uh, the fumes are really horrific. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to uh, actually silver solder a piece of co copper tube on each end. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do now. I have here material for this one. This is a 3 mm copper tube. Uh, I just uh, cut uh, suitable pieces out of this. Uh, well, uh, we have uh, actually 14 of these, so it will be 28 pieces. I will be using this tool for that thing. Let's put them close aside. And uh, this is really easy to do. Uh, you just put this tool there and uh, well it's in the limit of uh, the working limit of this tool, tool really. Uh, you don't need to roll it uh, very many times it will knack like that. Okay, uh, the next step uh, is to make uh, all 14, yes we have 14, uh, not 12, but 14, uh, of these uh, look like uh, this. Okay, now uh, we have uh, done all these now. Uh, I had uh, even extras from these, and uh, these are the remains of the ends, uh, this is uh, trash. Uh, the next step will to put some flux into this. And here I have a bottle of flux. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, this. I don't want to get anything of this outside of the. Well, at least this it, this is going somewhere because it's. Uh, I'm getting rid of this uh, flux. <laughs> oh, that. Okay. And now I will do the rest. This is my propane torch, which is in a vise. It just holds it in place, so I don't need to hold it with my hands. I need both my hands here when I'm doing uh, doing the soldering. And uh, I have quite a, this. Uh, this is a thin, thin solder. This one, I have quite a little of this, and it uh, might be enough. Uh, but uh, let's see. But then I have this. Uh, long thing which is thick. Uh, well, uh, it's a little bit problematic uh, because it's so thick. <laughs> so, okay. So let me zoom you in and let's start uh, silver soldering.
Yep. Done. Uh, well, uh, one was uh, not so good. Uh, uh, the silver solder went outside the tube, and uh, that's not a very good thing. I need to do some uh, preparations for that one, but the others uh, went just okay, and uh, this is uh, what was left of the <laughs> silver solder. So I didn't need to go into this uh, big uh, uh, thing. Well, next time I need to. <laughs> okay, now here is the cleanup process. Uh, I already cleaned up one and I have here a test piece. It has one 3.2 millimeter hole and one 3 millimeter hole. 3 mm hole is not very good, but the 3.2 is okay. I use these uh, rice grips uh, because I need to use my Dremel like this. Hopefully, you can see. I will go around and clean up the surface. Surface is here. If these are not cleaned up, you cannot solder them. So, yeah. There you are. Maybe also at the end. Yeah, okay. And it goes there like and uh, the other side. Uh, this material is phenolic. Uh, I already cut it uh, to suitable pieces uh, by a slitting so by the way. Uh, so I get a decent finish in one edge. So and now the next step is to drill a lot of holes into it <laughs> uh, for those uh, um, uh, resistor wire connectors and uh, so it will be a matrix of uh, first a three times four and then uh, two more holes the drill I'm using this one this is uh, carbide uh, carbide uh, 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 drill and well you have to use quite uh, high speed with this one maybe even more like that. And let's uh, drill the first hole right there. Let's see what happens here. Okay. Uh, making uh, these two pieces equal in length and also why I'm doing with this with the slitting so it leaves a perfect finish so uh, I, I will show you how I dialed this dialed this in uh, but uh, let's cut the first one now and uh, normally when you are using slitting so you are using quite a low speed so it's uh, well okay let's go Yeah. So here is the piece I'm going to dial in. It has one edge that uh, I have already cut and this other one is uh, uh, a surprise. So I put it, just put it here like that. Then I have two parallels. The other one goes here against the known edge and the other one goes uh, against the mill. And now I just push this like that and then tighten it so that it uh, won't move when I do the rest. Okay, set. Maybe you see, maybe you don't.
Yeah. And now these pieces should be of equal length. Match perfectly this way and uh, also the holes are there as they should in the correct places. All of them. This here is an aluminium plate. It's a one uh, centimeter. Now here we are, here we are, uh, I have a Swiss cheesy fight, this, uh, a bunch of holes and also some threads here, but these are just to hold things together. And now uh, the next step will be to add these uh, guys here, like that, and the other one goes there. And I will glue them. They would stay like that, but I would like to glue them so that they don't in any, uh, not easily anyway, come away. So, it should be more than enough. What we have here, we will be having this kind of, the, of a thing here with uh, these and uh, furthermore there will be a cage around here so therefore I have uh, these uh, threaded holes here so it will uh, be coming like over this uh, thing and uh, then we have two six millimeter holes to <laughs> uh, put it uh, in place and now we need to make this here you know, this, uh, you don't tighten these like crazy because uh, this is just plastic and uh, therefore I uh, want to use threadlock so that uh, I don't need to tighten them like crazy. So now, oh yeah, they are solid like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, it's uh, now so far, we have uh, solder at these and those. <laughs> uh, well, uh, one thing we can do here now is to measure this, the resistance, let's see. Uh, hopefully you can see that one. Okay, 43.4 ohms, okay, yeah, it's uh, okay. Next step uh, would be a uh, cover here, yeah, or maybe I cover, <laughs> cover these with epoxy first. Now we just uh, watch uh, the epoxy to, to harden.
<laughs> okay, uh, so this about uh, concludes this episode of Finno Greek machining. Uh, we made uh, the braking resistor. Oh, yeah, it's uh, 43 ohms, and uh, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, this one is adequate for the task. Well, however, <laughs> we still don't know, have uh, the lathe uh, where it belongs, nor do we have uh, the VFD uh, which uh, it belongs. Uh, well, um, probably uh, in the next episode uh, we shall see how I uh, transport the lathe into my workshop. Uh, till then, see you!